James, we have a very special guest today. Look who it is. Hey, Tracy. <laughs> Tracy. Hi, guys. Thanks for having me. Oh, of course. This is a really important subject. So, James, you know, um, and Tracy, as you guys know, we're going to have a really, I'm looking forward to this conversation about sundown towns. And I'm still shocked that there's this is still happening in America in 2023. So, Tracy James, whoever wants to take this question, could you explain to me what is a sundown town? And where does that term yeah. come from? Well, yeah, a sundown town is basically just that. It's a town where when the sun goes down, if you are of largely African-American descent, but could also be uh, Asian, it could also be Jewish, uh, could also be Hispanic. It is any town where if you are essentially not white, you are not welcome after dark. And there were signs on the entrance and as you're leaving these cities, in many places that said, you know, X person, usually black person using the N word, right? Don't let the sun go down on you here. And the police enforced that those policies, you can call them ordinances, laws, they were illegal, essentially, especially after the civil rights movement, but they were still enforced. And so it was a local policy um, that everyone knew, that everyone abided by, that the police enforced um, in various towns all over the United States. There, it wasn't just in the South. In fact, per capita, it was largely outside of the South because the South needed and wanted and was accustomed to having those minorities as uh, servants and, you know, as hands around the house and around the field and whatnot. And those signs and those policies are what follow. And that's where the term sundown town comes from. So as we sit here today, the three of us, is do sundown towns still exist in America in 2023? Absolutely. Absolutely. If you look at uh, Minden, Nevada, for example, you can go there today on the 25th of May, 2023, and there will be a siren that will go off this evening um, around sunset that will remind you if you are an indigenous person or if you are a person of color to leave Minden, Nevada today. That is happening today. I, Tracy, I'm so baffled by this. James, how is this even legal? Like how are this, this is, you know, as a, a white person and that doesn't, uh, that I'm not from this country, I'm shocked at this. This is absolutely shocking to me. I'm speaking. Yeah, I mean, I think James, you were saying that this was like a law that was put on the books. It started at, in Alabama, right? It was Mississippi, actually. Mississippi um, mm -hmm. really forged the blueprint, the legal blueprint for these exclusionary practices. And then other states followed suit, much like what's happening in Florida today. Florida is establishing sort of a baseline of policy and laws uh, that are exclusionary. And then other states, such as Alabama and, and you know, you name it, Virginia, Texas, Tennessee are following suit especially when it pertains to anti-Black and anti-LGBTQ uh, people and populations. So that pattern of one state develops its rights to be different and separate based on its ideology and its culture, and then other states with similar ideologies and culture follow suit. Mississippi did this after the Civil War uh, and then the anti-Bellum you know, Bellum South. Other states follow suit. Um, and we see today in 2023, Florida is doing the same and other states are also following suit. So basically, this is the new, I mean, this, the whole attack on diversity, equity, and inclusion is, and woke, which is a new term for Black, basically, is, so this is the new Jim Crow, basically. You know, I want to know who's living in these towns. Like, I really want to get into the mindset of these people. Like, why do you think that this is okay and that this is a good place to live? People who live there were always there. Like they're born and raised. It's what they know, to be honest. Um, so they weren't they weren't always there, right? Um, the there were Native Americans and indigenous people that were in those places before white Americans um, decided to push them out and take the space to be their own uh, first. And then they wanted to keep it their own and they wanted to then exclude anyone else from coming into the space that that um, might compete against them for jobs or for land or for ownership right and then where those people did actually set up camp and do well you know the tulsa oklahomas and the other places they then went in and burned those places down look at this map that's all 
those are all the black massacres. Oh, hey, look, see the one that says Eufaula 1874? Mm hmm Alabama, southeast corner, Eufaula 1874. That's my hometown. I have a direct connection to that map. Wow. And they even, I mean, look, it happened in Detroit, New York, Washington, D.C., Philly, Wilmington, Atlanta, Charleston, Memphis, St. Louis, Springfield, Missouri, Chicago, like not just, I mean, Tulsa is not the only one. Who's allowed to be in those places is, is, has morphed as well, right? Because for a while, Jews weren't allowed in those places. You had to be white, Anglo-Saxon, you know, Protestant. Catholics weren't allowed into some of those spaces. Um, Italians weren't allowed into some of those spaces. But then as, as America is browning, to your earlier point, Tracy, um, you know, and as the demographics and the demography of America is turning over, um, their, their exceptions are starting to be made. Did you say America is browning? I like that. I like that term. Browning. Yeah, that's not mine. I didn't make that up. The browning of America is how yeah. the demography of America is turning over, you know, to where I think by 2050 or whatever it is, uh, you know, like our, my, my kids are, are in a population where they are in the majority, mm -hmm. okay? Whereas people who are voting today, Gen X and above, I'd say, um, maybe even some millennials, um, the, you know, brown people are still in the minority, but for the little kids, their brown people are in the majority. And as they raise into voting age and ownership age, uh, today, the majority is trying to make sure that even when they become in the minority, kind of in a South African apartheid sense, they still have power and control. Okay. Exactly, basically, yeah. You know, it's, I just feel like the fact that we're even having this conversation, we're going to put it out there today. People aren't aware. Like I had conversations last night about this and people are like, what? you know, the fact that in America in 2023, I can't say this enough. There are places that people like Tracy and James cannot go at night. That is preposterous to me that we live in this country with these laws. And it's really important that people are aware. I mean, that's all we can do with this, this, uh, these conversations that we're having. You know, the sad part, Steph, is, you know, we say, okay, it's 2023. These things shouldn't be happening. But we've been saying that, you know, every year and every decade. It's 20, you know, it's 2010. These things are still happening. It's the year 2000. These things are still happening. Oh, my God, it's 1990. I can't believe these things are still happening. It's the 80s. I can't believe this is still happening, you know. We've been saying this every decade since 1865, right? I can't believe these things are happening. In fact, that's what happened in 1965, 100 years later, after 1865. That's where the whole March on Washington and the Civil Rights Movement came from is because, you know, Black America finally said, hey, look, we've been talking about this for 100 years. America, you have not, you know, you have defaulted on the check that you wrote us. You have not follow your obligations. You've not kept your word. It's been 100 years we've been saying, I can't believe this is still happening. And so the fact that it's happening, you know, now in 2023, some 60 years after that 100 year point, 160 years later, sadly, I'm not surprised because that's been the pattern. That's been our history. And James, so you were saying that the app shares like location and say safely it, I mean it's sad to say like you know where I remember they had the green book so basically this is the digital version of the green book um, that helps people navigate going driving from one place to another in this country is that did I hear you correctly uh, yeah, Tracy, that's what we're after that's mm -hmm. the problem we're seeking to solve is helping people to navigate smarter in a place, in a way that, that factors in their identity into their decision mm -hmm. calculus for how they're gonna go from point A to point B. And, you know, speaking of the Green Book, we have a copy, right? You mm -hmm. can actually go out and buy your own copy of this. Uh, it's a reprint, this is from, you know, this is the 1936 edition to 1940, but they printed mm -hmm. this book, Victor Hugo Green printed the Green Book to help African-Americans navigate all these rules about what towns and where to get their services, right? And this book was in print from um, 1936 until about 1965. 
And the reason it stopped being printed in uh, 1965 is because the Civil Rights Act and the Voting Rights Act came out and they thought, okay, Jim Crow is dead. No need for this anymore because we're allowed everywhere now. And that's just not true. It wasn't true then. And it's technically and sadly still not true today. Right. So your app would be able to identify, so say Tracy's, we'll use her as an example, is traveling. And uh, her that app would, would identify for her that, hey, this town, these are the laws, you know, it's a sundown town. Like, would it be that, is, is your technology that simplistic in the sense of don't go here? Or <laughs> I, I'm just trying to understand. Mm -hmm. kind of well, I think yeah. it's saying, he's saying it's like if I said, okay, I'm going from New Jersey to Atlanta, mm -hmm. it would route me so that I do not go through a sundown town. It would route me around those sort of, bait, what do we call them, landmines. And <laughs> basically they're landmines, right? Yeah, I mean, they're, you can call them cultural impediments, right? Or, or unsafe zones for people of your, your culture, your background, right? Your identity. And that's the technology that we're developing. We're still working on it, right? We have one piece of it that's out in the public space now, which is a live stream body cam piece, which is called Angel Tech, Angel with a J. But the, the larger navigation system of which that Angel was a part of, and we pulled it out based on what happened to George Floyd, right, in 2020, mm -hmm. we're still building that. It is a, uh, it's a big problem to solve. The data's there. We're just putting it together, and we haven't actually put it out into the public space yet. But yes, that's the premise upon which the company was founded. Interesting. So how, I have a question about safety because you have a history in keeping people safe from your background. How safe or unsafe are we in this country right now? Well, yes, I do have a background in, in safety and security, um, you know, 30 years in national security. Uh, both as an engineer and as a pilot and then a member of the intelligence community doing geospatial, you know, mapping and safe zones and unsafe zones for our, you know, armed forces and our war fighters and our allies. I've done this in Afghanistan. I've done this in Africa, certainly in the United States. And um, when you when you talk about safety, it is a very it's security. It's a it's a personal thing. It's also a corporate and a cultural thing. When you say how safe are we, it depends on who the we is right and it depends on where that person or those people are and time matters as well what time of the day what time of the night that's the whole sundown piece comes right so the safety and security is a multifaceted multi-factor kind of a problem set and we're doing this all the time tracy you're always trying to figure out am i safe here am i not safe here what time you know and so we as human beings naturally do this no matter what color you are we as human beings naturally do this in america People who are minorities, specifically African-Americans, have a long multi-hundred year history of this since, you know, uh, 1619 forward. We've had to try to figure out what are these rules? What are these protocols? You know, am I safe? Am I not safe? How do I get from point A to point B during the day, during the night? Um, so that's sort of a long answer to your question about how to figure out how safe we are. We're, we're cooking all of those factors in based on people into technology so that we can put that, a tool out to help people with that, that calculus. But I'll also say to you, just look at some of the travel advisories that have come out about safety, right? If you look at the NAACP's recent travel advisory, it basically says if you are African-American and or LGBTQ plus in the state of Florida, in that location, you are not safe right now because this state is openly hostile towards people of color, towards African-Americans and towards LGBTQ plus members. And so it advises you, the NAACP, right, is advising people to be very careful, warning you even when you're traveling in the state of Florida about your safety. And that is, that is terrible, that, that is horrific. Um, it's not sadly the first time that's happened, right? The NAACP also issued a travel advisory in 2017 about the state of Missouri, basically saying the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I'd say, you know, we have to pay attention, right? We have to be uh, mindful and understand, especially when organizations like the NAACP are putting out travel advisories and other countries are putting out travel advisories about the United States and your safety based on our epidemic of gun violence. Um, those are those are many things that help you understand, us understand our, our state of safety right now. And it's, I'd say, if you had to give it a grade, it's probably a C minus or a D 
in America as far as safety goes on any given day when we have yeah. more school shootings in a year than we have days on the calendar so far, our um, our safety rating is, is very low. Very low. I mean, literally, we have, we're having third world problems. 